you and he's in the car, as soon as he catches a short nap, somebody will come and give him okra. Uh, you know, that alone, for him, he knows that there's, the, 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 um, it can be, there's nothing good about that interview. That was the affliction. Now, they serve him that food in the spirit realm and it manifests in the natural realm. I pray for you. Whatsoever controls the, the spirit realm negatively against you, the power of God arrests them today in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever it is, that is controlling and manipulating the spirit realm against you, against your family. We speak against them by the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And so it is important for you to be in charge. And how can you be in charge? If you are not prayerful, you cannot be in charge. And you must mature to the level where you know that, yeah, I'm in charge. The Bible was saying something in Galatians chapter 4. It says, as far as a child... I mean, a, a prince or a noble, as far as he's still a child, he does not differ anything. Do you understand? He's being controlled by natural rudiments. Although he's air apparel, but as far as he's concerned, he's still a child. So he has to be under teachers, under governors. That is how it is also with a lot of so-called born-again children of God. They've been born again for years, but they are babies in the spirit realm. They can't speak a thing that will command the supernatural because they are babies. So, when you get mature as a child of God, you mature into power. You mature into authority. And it's not about your physical age. It's about your worth in the spirit realm and what you carry and the revelation of what you know. Praise the Lord. So it is important for you to understand this because that is where the real blessing is. If someone is going to be sentenced to a life of poverty, they will control it from the spirit realm. I was ministering in a place many years ago, I think about 28 years ago now. And right in that fellowship, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw a man there who was presented a, a bicycle, you know, this uh, Panwan Tapa bicycle. For people in Nigeria, you will know. Panwain Tapa, Keke Rally. You know, that rally bicycle. Very tattered bicycle, but that was what was given to that child. Now, and the Lord said to me, that is the transference of poverty. It was done in the spirit realm, but in the physical realm, the man does not know anything. So the only thing he sees is that he is living a life of poverty. So many afflictions, many problems that people are passing through, they originate from the spirit realm. And that is why a man that is not spiritually inclined, a woman that is not spiritually inclined, will only continue to waste our time, waste his time. A woman was pregnant, and each time she saw a bull hitting her womb in the dream, the pregnancy drops. I pray for you, you will become a giant in the spirit realm. Yeah. That when the devil comes to check you out, you are there by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That nothing dreads you, nothing terrifies you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you still with me? Somebody shout amen. amen. I want your look to encourage me. Otherwise, I will tell you to stand up. That is the truth. Some people, the way they are looking at me, I don't know. Let your look encourage me to preach to you. <laughs> You know, some people are looking at you. Pastor, continue. Continue. Well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let me just share with you. So, how does God bless us? Praise the Lord. Number one medium through which God blesses people. God can decide to put certain blessing in the hand of an individual for you. Do you understand? So, God can bless you through people. That is the number one thing. It is commonly said that God will not come down from heaven to help or to bless a man. This statement, to some extent, may not be true. The reason being that God will always use a man, use man for man. For instance, my coming to the United Arab Emirates, God used someone for me. I went to a place preaching and the person couldn't get 
access to the place of preaching because the whole place was, was filled up and the person had to hang at the window watching me. Now, at the end of the service, the person walked up to me and he said, oh, man of God, oh, I was really blessed by your preaching. He said, please, I would like to know you. Are you listening to me? I said, okay. That same person was a person that the Lord used for me to come to United Arab Emirates. Are you listening? The person said, man of God, consider your family relocating abroad. I say abroad. They say, go and think about it. China or Dubai. I've never heard about Dubai before. I said, really? Now, it took me about six to seven months. I forgot it entirely. Because when I left the university, I was just, my, my siblings, my big sisters were in England, and they were just telling me, come over. They sent money, they sent everything. But now if I had gone to the UK, the ministry would have been over. Look at. To buttress the revelation the Lord showed me, seeing a lot of people on the queue, and the queue was not ventilated. And the Lord said to me, now because you are not on your duty post, that is why this queue is choked. He says, so as soon, as soon as you get to that place, there are destiny ties to you that must be ventilated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And to the glory of God when we came, I mean, he started encountering people and people started moving. So your breakthrough can be packaged in the hands of somebody. And that is why I, I encourage you, there's a need for you to know how to treat people. Don't look at everybody as a devil. You may be dealing with an angel that has your blessing in your hands and you are shouting on that angel. The angel will go and reply to God and say, God, I got to her, but she was shouting on me. So you must know how to deal with people. Don't backbite people. Don't make people to hate themselves. Be an apostle of peace. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the sons of God. Are you with me? Because you don't know that person that God is going to use for you. For instance, I've encountered angelic visitation many times. I needed money. God will not come from heaven and say, All about the day, I'm God. Take the money. No. He will put the money in the hand of a person. And he will tell the person my name. It has happened to me several times. This is his number. Call him and tell him you need to see him hallelujah Amen. now let me show you this practical one that happened and you will understand go with me to the book of Genesis the book of Genesis in chapter 18 I think Genesis chapter 18 okay in from, from verse 1 Genesis 18 from verse 1 and the Lord appeared unto him in the pillar in the plain of Mamre and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood by him and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servants. Praise the Lord. Let a little water, I pray thee, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort your heart. After that, ye may pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant and they said do so as thou hast said so three men came but those men are you still with me shall we rise up now shall we rise up one person is enough if i see you do like this everybody will stand up just look at that person beside you say it's like you are the one pastor saw praise the lord three men Unknown to Abraham that these were 
God the Father, the Son, and the angel. I mean, and, and the Holy Spirit. Three, personality, but they, they, they took on the continents of man. He saw them, he didn't despise them, he didn't disdain them. He came, he rushed up to them. Oh, please don't pass by, come to my house. And Abraham prepared them something, and those guys ate. Amen. Amen. And by the time they finished eating, Holy Spirit of God, the blessing that Abraham was looking for was kept in the hands of these people. And by the time they felt comfortable with eating, they said, go and call your wife. I pray for everyone. You will never miss your blessings any longer in the name of Jesus. Just God bless you from someone is enough. It's not compulsory for you to know that person. I was going for my mom's in-laws barrier. Now be seated. And I needed some cash. And I was in my house. And somebody knocked my door. And I opened. He said, please, are you Pastor Labode? I said, yes. And the person gave me an envelope. Don't forget, I was to go for, uh, I was to embark on a trip. And by the time I opened the envelope, thousands of dirhams inside. That was the first and the last time I saw the person. So meaning that God Almighty knows your address. There are some of us, your angels, you've kept them at bay because of your character. Tap somebody, say, Pastor is talking to you. Some people's character is like chili, chili pepper, pepper. Your angel that God assigned to you, you have shown your angel pepper. Yeah, God will not come down from heaven, but God will use man for man. That is how it has always been. And so I'm encouraging you, don't ever look down on anybody. Don't ever mistreat anybody. Whoever comes your way, you must accord, acc accord them with the honor and the respect that they deserve. Are you with me? Yes. That is one way that God blesses. But before that can happen, there is a need for you to be a giver. It says in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 36, Give and it shall be given unto you. Not give to God now. Give and it shall be given unto you. Okay, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men, not angels, shall men give unto your bosom? For with the same measure ye meet, with all it shall be meted, measured unto you again. So, as God designed to bless people, He blesses people through human beings. At another time in my life, one day I just got a call from a man, and the man called me and said, please, are you Pastor Labode? I said, yes. He said, please, I would like to meet you. I said, okay, we will stay at uh, Cora Oriental Hotel then. I said, okay, on Friday at social time, we're going to be in church. You can meet me. And so the man met me. He said, and he gave me an envelope. I'm sharing this testimony in order for you to know that the blessing that God wants to give you is in the hand of somebody. I'm telling you. That blessing is in the hand of somebody. That contact is with someone. <coughs> and this person met me and he handed me an envelope. I opened it. I needed to pay my house rent at that time. And thousands of dirhams inside. Inside of the envelope. And I said, please, who are you? He said, please, with due respect, there is no need. <laughs> I knew he's an angel. I pray you will have angelic visitation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say that amen again. Amen. Number two, God will bless you with what you have. There are some of you, you have something, you don't know you have them. All that you ever need is either inside of you or around you. It's never far away. 
there is an adage in my country say what you are looking for in shokoto is in your shokoto what is the meaning of that 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 there is a particular location that is a state in my country it's shokoto it's very far now shokoto is what i'm putting on so you are looking for something in shokoto is in shokoto meaning that what you are looking for and that is how it is in life some people now look how many people have met their husbands and wife in gkc but until the lord will open their eyes they don't know that sister you are sitting beside could be your husband that is what i'm saying to you you had better treat people well a brother many years ago i asked him i said what are you doing about your marriage he said uh, daddy uh i said now open your eyes shine your eyes very well because what you are looking for is not far just look around look around every one of you just look around i'm telling you even the almighty god himself he wanted to create man he had to look inward a man after creating man the bible says in genesis 2 verse 7 god it was inside of him he breathed into man and man became a living soul so what you are looking for in life it is not far away from you i have that understanding many 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 years ago our church in our center in ajman we were believing god for a facility a bigger facility unknown to us that the next door was vacant and just ready for us to purchase and so as we were praying and believing god the lord led us to somebody who connected me with another person and eventually they came to open this door he said this place has been empty for the past eight years i pray for you what you are looking for may god direct it to you in the name of jesus Amen. somebody came to me to my office some years ago <laughs> the person said oh there is a man of god in nigeria i've traveled to nigeria to go and meet that man of god to pray for me what happened to her she was losing her head her hair do you understand and it, as a woman that was a concern to her unknown to her that there is a prophet in the house all he just needed to do is to connect now by the time she connected herself the lord healed her and healed the hair so meaning that in your environment do you understand especially your spiritual environment what you are looking for is there there is too much miracle in this house that can go around everybody are you still with me yes, so that is how it has always been the blessing you are looking for is it the fruit of the womb is it your spouse your future wife future husband now a man uh one of our brothers he his uh, visa was always being turned down again and again you know and uh, you know just as it is with the nigerian visa he has applied several times and so now one day he just woke up and he kept money inside an envelope and he went to drop that money on the altar he said god today you will encounter me now by the time he got to the immigration he met a guy they collected his paper and they were you know they told him go to abu dhabi now he went to meet that man specifically he said i know you can help me that is why i came do you know that that man was the one who opened up the system and gave him the visa i pray for you in the name of jesus your miracle that is in the hands of men and women it, let it be released today in the name of jesus the son of god it is never far away the almighty god wanting to create people human being he just looked inward and he gave man out of what was inside of him and he gave them his own spirit praise the lord he didn't need to create any other thing he has it with him he just gave it to them what you have is enough for you so i'm saying to you all that you ever need is either inside of you or around you god will never create anything new as it were anymore that is why invention continuing the world this camera was not created by god 
you know, whatever it is, the chair you are sitting on was not created by God. But God created the trees in the, you know, in the, in the forest. God created resources under the head. And God gave the man the wisdom to do what? To process them. And now we have different whatever. You understand? So what God is expecting is something new. Something special. Hallelujah. So the question to ask yourself now is, what is in your hand? What do you have? Now go with me to the book of Second Kings. Are you still here with me? Yes. Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4, I read from verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wife of the son of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, the, the, my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take him unto him, my two sons, to be born men. Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in your house? Now, look at that one, your house. Your house is your own body now. That is your house. What do you have in your house? It was a pointed question to that woman. Now, hear what the woman said. And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house. That is what some of you say. I'm disadvantaged. I don't have anything. But it's a lie. It says, I don't have anything save a pot of oil. Somebody said, that is enough. That is enough. Some of you, you discover that you are a talkative. You talk. Just like pastor. <laughs> it is enough to bless you. You have it in your house. Some of you can design. You can write. You can write stories. It is in your house. So that is the way God can bless you. So what you know is enough to bless you. Are you with me? Please understand what I'm telling you. It is, it is the way God has patterned his blessing in his kingdom how to bless people. Are you, are you still here? Yes, sir. And so what happened? The woman said, I don't have anything. The man of God said, okay. As soon as the woman says, save a pot of oil. Then said he, that is the, the, the man of God, go, borrow vessels abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon your son, and shalt pour out into all these verses, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Hallelujah. Amen. As soon as you pour and it's full, put it aside. Some of you from today, that miracle will begin to happen in your life. Amen. You have just, you know, discredited yourself You've written yourself off. You think that you don't have anything. But I'm telling you by the wisdom of God, you have something. Amen. You have something. Do you have the gift to speak to people? To comfort people? It is enough. That is a blessing of God on its own in your life. All you just need to do is discover it. Refine it. Now begin to deploy it. That is how it is in life. So as a matter of fact, God has never created any useless person on earth. Everyone created by God, they are all loaded with the blessing of the Father. Of course, I'm aware of satanic intrusion into the lives of people by, you know, stealing what belongs to people. But notwithstanding, everybody has glorious destiny. Glorious destiny by God. I told this woman the other day, I don't know what I say you should do. Have you done it? You have done it. Excellent. You just continue to see how everything turns out. You have it, but you don't know that you have it. Until somebody will point you to it. See, see, see. So the man of God asks the question, what do you have in your house? I said to you, your body is your house. Your spirit soul is living in this body. You have something inside. There is no body that is created useless. Lift up your right hand and say, I know I have it. Lord, give me the wisdom to discover it for myself, to refine it and deploy it in the name of Jesus. Now, let me give you, uh, okay, I'm coming, to, I'm coming there now. 
The next one, which is exactly what I want to talk about now, the way God blesses people is through unique ideas. As someone that runs ministry, for instance, everything I do in ministry, they are all specific ideas that God has given to me uniquely. By the mercy of God, I do not copy any ministry because every ministry has uniqueness. So I go to God, I say, Lord, what do you want me to do in this situation? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do this? He's the one that gives me maximum impact. Let it be the first uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of the month. I did not copy it from any ministry. Are you with me? Yes, that is what happens when you as a child of God, you are into business, you are into selling or whatever. It will give you an idea that's going to be your own cutting edge. Uniquely yours. Now, listen to this. I mean, I, I'm talking of unique ideas now. At times, I come out of my bedroom, I'm in, my, in my sitting room. I'm not praying, but I'm just thinking. What am I doing? Thinking. Just thinking. He said, come, let us reason together. I'm just reasoning. I'm just thinking. Lord, how about this? How about this? And the inspiration of God will come and begin to reveal certain things to me. I told somebody, I said, now, listen to this very well. <laughs> An airline, I will not mention the name, a particular airline. And this person is from this country. And I said to him, I said, don't you know that you already have an airline? You have an airline already. All you just need to do is do some things around that airline. And you begin to get blessing from it. He said, how do, do I mean? I said, sit down, I will tell you. Somebody say unique ideas. That is how God blesses his people. He will just give you the idea. He gave Jacob an idea, unique, and that idea bankrupted labor. And God see, does it in our generation. Go and look at scientists of renown, past scientists. Most of them are born again Christians. Just by meddling with God, by the, with the Spirit of God, God started pumping ideas to their spirit. Some of them will see certain things in the dream. Some of you, you have the gift of dreams and the, we, all the dreams you have been having, may God help you. It's, if you are not being chased by a cow, you're going to be chased by, you are going on top of a mountain, you are coming down. You are, now, begin to tell God, Lord, give me unique ideas that will benefit me. That is why I, I don't like, I'm not a, a, a dream interpreter. Somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, I had a dream. Uh, 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 I'm not Joseph. If God gives you a dream, tell him, give me the interpretation of this dream. And in your dream, God will begin to give you unique ideas for yourself, exclusively for you. That is one way that God blesses his people. There are many examples in the Bible. Praise the Lord. The people building the Tower of Babel, for instance, it was an idea. They call it imagination. It just drops in their mind. There are so many things you have received. It just died because you never worked on it. Praise the Lord. All the books that I've written. Now, this is just the latest book. Blessed to be a blessing to your world. It came in form of an idea. And I sat up with the Holy Spirit and I started writing it. It's an idea. There are so many things that he has given unto you in form of idea. All that God wants you to do now is now begin to translate it into reality. Take the first step. In Genesis chapter 11, some people came together and said, hey, let's go. Genesis chapter 11, look at what they said from verse 1. It says, and the whole art was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as the journey from the east, they came and found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwell there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly, and they shall, and they 
and they had bricks for stone and slimes had they for mortar and they said go to let us build us a city and a tower not a bungalow amen a city and a tower they had the concept in their mind and they said now nah. they now push out the idea back with their mouth onto people he said it's the tower is going to reach the heaven he says let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth now because their own uh, what is the idea was anti-God. Do you understand? That was why or why God actually scattered it. But if it is a noble, you know, vision, God will have multiplied. God will have given them the backup. So the question to ask yourself now, what is that idea that God has given to you? Even in UAE, as a career person, what ideas has the Lord given to you? It, is, it should be uniquely yours. It doesn't matter. You may be in a particular career now. God can give you an idea. So I told, now there was a particular person came to me and he said, this, 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 this. I said, you being a teacher, don't you know that you have a school inside of you? Because God will never ever do anything. He will never take you to a place just for the sake of it. For the mere fact that God has taken you to a school that like you are a teacher, it only depends on you. If you can stretch it, you will be surprised that a school is there. Amen. Amen. Primary school is there. Secondary school is there. And university is there. It is as far as your eyes can see. If somebody listen to me, yes, that is how it is in life. Don't let anybody fool you. Don't let anybody, you know, confuse you. That is how it is. I went to my, one of my friend's school back in Nigeria. He has a secondary school. I say, have you conceived idea for a university? He just joked about it. He just, <laughs> university. Now, as soon as he conceives that idea, he's going to have it. Because that is how it is. It is not about capital now. It is about a vision. It's about an idea. So I'm challenging you today. That blessing of God in your life, translate it. You see, what we do most in most cases is that you know, go and read Genesis chapter 13. You will discover from verse 13 downwards, God said to Abraham, come, see, can you count the numbers of the star? As far as your eyes can see, it is the same thing about life. I, I don't see myself as a motivational speaker. I'm a servant of God. I speak the word of God to you. This is how God blesses his people. I read of a story of a man in America. He just had a dream. And in that dream, forklift and heavy equipment, you know, moving object. And at that time, nothing like that has ever happened. But he saw it in his dream and he called some engineer. He drew what he saw. He said, see, come. That was how he started making those things that can convey tons of sand and, and stone and rock from one place to another place. He is a child of God. He is a, he is a you know, you know. He's, he's, he's a servant of God. So God gave him that idea for his own benefit. I'm praying and I'm believing God for you from tonight, from this moment. God will begin to give you ideas in the name of Jesus. And the ideas that God will give to you, please, you must run with it. You must run with it. Because if God gives you an idea and you don't do anything about it, it will just keep quiet. It will keep quiet. So what happened? People reign in life. They rule in life through ideas. Where I am today and where this ministry is today, it's an idea. I came to UAE. I saw churches meeting in, you know, uh, Holy Trinity. And in my heart, I conceived it because I discovered that, oh, having a meeting in the hotel is not the best, Okay. In those days, I had a, a, an experience of it where people come for church service and after the service, you want to pray for someone and you say, okay, come. It's just like uh, if uh, on that Tuesday, you know, so I was going to my car, so she came and said, man of God, please, my mom is in the hospital, please pray. Now, if we had not gotten this facility, I would have prayed for her in the main road. If she falls down, maybe police will come and say, what happened to her? 
So I just said to her, I said, come, come, come inside. Because we have a facility. Praise God. Hallelujah. Prayed. I knew that she was going to fall under the power of God. And so as soon as we lay hands upon her, the miracle happened. So I conceived it many years ago. I said, Lord, give us a facility that is going to be exclusively our own. It was an idea. It was not rampant among the African community. It was not there. So your idea uniquely is what God is going to use to increase his blessing in your life. Now, many years ago, when we were coming to UAE, my wife is a businesswoman. You know, she has business strings, you know, and that, that she pulls. So by the time she came, she was telling me, man of God, what is the business that is here in this country? Uh, the one that is very rampant is visa. But the Lord warned me, he said, don't do visa. I told her, mommy, please, visa. No, 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 no. Mba, mba. But you know, because she's a businesswoman, she just wanted to do it. Okay, okay. She did that business, visa for people. Till today, people are weighing her. Mm. I think there's a particular guy who, who, who is still owing her about 6,000 plus. About three years ago, she saw the person and said, Daddy, that is a guy that I said, Madam, forget this thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But something happened. When we were coming, she said, Lord, what will I be doing in UAE? She said, okay. She has an idea. She said, what of if I become a distributor of Bible in UAE? Because it's a Muslim country and people will need Bible. Are you with me? And books. It was a conceived idea in her. And she started working at it. So many of us, is because you have not taken the first step. That is why it's saying nothing is working. But from today, Every invisible chain on your waist and on your legs shall be broken in the name of Jesus. And every blockage in your mind, yeah, that is where the battle is actually. The restriction in your mind, let the blood of Jesus deal with it now in the name of Jesus. So don't tell me that uh, a pastor is because you are a pastor. Yeah, it's because of, I'm a pastor. That is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, what has the Lord called you to do? You may be engaged in a business, but God cannot begin to give you another idea of what to do. So, I'm saying to you, the blessing of God comes through, number one, through what? Through people. Number two? Thank you very much. Uh, see, I think there's a, it's important for you to write down. When you write, you will not forget. You just, when you get home, you can just review this thing. So the third thing I'm talking about is true idea, okay? Ideas, unique ideas. It's just unique. Unique. It's not compulsory that you have to recreate something, okay? Okay, for instance, look at this keyboard. We have so many types in the market. Each one improving over the others. You understand? That is how it is in life. Why do we have many brands? Toyota. We have uh, Mercedes-Benz, we have uh, 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 Mazda and whatever. But all of them have just four tires. And all of them are in the market. So your own idea is waiting to fly. So by the power of God, God will give you the grace to give back to it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. The quality of your idea... The idea you generate will determine, to a large extent, what you get out of life. Whatever you see around you was once an idea in the heart of somebody. Every great feat by somebody, somewhere, came via the power of idea. That is how it has always been. Okay, uh, this guy, Richard Braxton, it says, oh, I want to create an avenue where people can go to the space for uh, space tourism. And they started the project. Yours may not be that, but there is another one that you can do for yourself. Life is very cheap if you know what God has called you to do in life. 
you continue to fly. So what the blessing of God does in the life of a man is to confer the ability to prosper through uncommon means which only could have been suggested by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit will just come to you, give, whisper an idea to you. He's waiting, watching you. Are you going to run with it? If you are going to run with it, it's going to be a blessing to you. Jacob outclassed Laban via God's inspired idea. An idea was given to him by the Holy Spirit, which led to the multiplying of the sheep of Laban. You see, this is what the Holy Spirit, through the power of idea, could have achieved, not by any other person. Praise the Lord. Such blessing mostly does not come in cash. That is why I said to you, money is not everything. All you just have to do is, first of all, conceive the idea. When you conceive the idea, there are some people who want to buy the idea. There is a guy, um, I, I don't know, maybe, I can, uh, maybe the pronunciation is correct, Calendly. The, the, the guy is the one who made that app. So, he's a Nigerian. He just had this, had this mind that, oh, I want to begin to use, let CEOs of company begin to use a particular app for them to make appointment. It doesn't matter from any part of the world. And so he went, he started working on this thing. He started working on it. I'm challenging you today. That idea the Lord has given to you, you had better go visit it. If you don't visit it, that idea will go to another person. So the guy traveled. He consulted. He himself cannot do it, but he consulted people who can do it for him. Hallelujah. Amen. When the blessing of God finds expression in the life of a person, that's when such person is seen as successful. But come to think about it. What is it that a man has that he has not received? So everything, it comes in form of inspiration. Everything that you have in life is given to you, including the breath in your nostril. When you wake up in the morning, the grace for you to stand up is given to you by God. In fact, the ability for you to think is from God. Make sure you maximize it and the blessing of God will be multiplying your life. Amen. Now, the, the fourth, is it the fourth now? Okay. Through supernatural means. You can't explain it, but it's flowing towards you. Okay? We live in a world where the spirit controls the physical or the natural realm. Whatever result desire in our world can be forced into existence from the spirit realm. For instance, let me give you... Now, do you know that most presidents of the nations of this earth, they are being controlled from the back door. They are there, but they are answerable to certain powers. You don't know, but that is what is happening. So there is nothing in the natural realm that you see that does not have its own source from the spirit. That is why we children of God, we are, van we are at a, van a very vantage position. Because now you can just kneel down or you want to pray and you stand up in authority and begin to dec decree. You see, whatever you say, Whatever you say, you decree. It is taking place in that realm. It is just because we are too re restricted or limited to the natural realm that you don't know that certain things are happening. Now, let me give you an ex example now. Shall we rise up? What is it that you desire, for instance? I want you... You may not close your eyes. And you begin to speak to your mind now. You begin to declare... That your mind must pick ideas and is being generated by the Spirit of God. Because you see, in that realm, ideas are coming. That is why some people will travel into that realm, the covens of the devil, to go and get idea. Those ideas are the things that they now bring into this realm. Facebook is from that realm. Instagram, Twitter, everything is from that realm. Oh, are you a fashion designer? Are you a musician? 
Now, I was listening to a music this morning. If you're a musician, if you're a, a servant of God, you minister in song, the Bible is enough for you. That book, that book is a book of, uh, what is it now? Um, it's a book of inspiration. You sit up with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will begin to give you lyrics with which you can translate into songs you can receive from heaven and mortal men will not accept it. You know, all these musicians, they say that they blow and all this. And the devil give them. He just endorsed them. I pray for you. May your mind be open now. Amen. May you begin to access deep, I mean, deeper things of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brethren, when you are talking about the blessing, the blessing, the blessing, this is just how God blesses people. Especially if you have connected yourself to this and you, that, is, that has become your lifestyle, blessing is not far from you. You just begin to manifest it. In John chapter 6 or 63, it is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Now, if you now begin to speak certain words concerning yourself, what people, what kills people is the word they speak concerning themselves. What happened tonight? I mean, this morning, if you can only repent and you will say to yourself, I will no negativity will ever come out of this mouth concerning my life. Because whatever you say, you must have it. Be it positive, be it negative. If you say, hey, you don't die, oh. death is in, in the corner waiting. If you say to yourself in the name of Jesus, I'm walking in the ideas of God. You will magnet it. But listen, let me warn you. When you have ideas, don't share. What did I say? <laughs> okay. Keep it to yourself. That is your own word. Child, brain child. You keep it to yourself. Continue to nurse it. Because men are, men are wicked. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? The idea you share with that person, it will surprise you that the person is flying with that idea. And you are saying, hey, chai. And this was what I had. So what am I saying? Keep it to yourself. Is it the idea of going into a particular trade? Give, keep it to yourself. See the way you are looking at me. If anybody has suffered any setback because you share your idea with someone, may God comfort you. Amen. May God give you another idea Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. All you just have to do is sit back, begin to work at it. Continue to work at it. Prayerfully. One day, the Lord will make that idea to produce. Because the person you are sharing it with it is either the person steals it or the person kills it. Those two things. Because there are ears that shouldn't hear certain things. As soon as it drops in their ear, there is a spirit inside of them that we attack it. I'm speaking deep things to you now. If the person is not attacking it, he wants to steal it. So what do you do in that situation? You keep it to yourself. You keep it. Many years ago, I was sharing with someone. I said, this is what the Lord is leading me to do. This is what the Lord is leading me to do. This and this and this. And the person said, ah, that is exactly what I want to do. <laughs> that was the last discussion. I just said, make sure. I didn't continue in that discussion again. He said, ah, that is exactly what, I, okay, okay, okay. But glory be to God. What I'm doing today is what I'm doing. I pray for you. Your, your vision and your good ideas. I mean, it's given to you by God. The enemy will not steal it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray that prayer for yourself? I want you to close your eyes and we're going to go to God. You're going to pray that prayer. Father, Lord, okay. I think you just pray the prayer of forgiveness first. 
I'm meant to understand that there are a lot of people here, you have ideas that God has given to you. It's just there. You've not used them. They're just there, idle, or idling away. Lord, please forgive your people. Forgive us. God is a God. He doesn't waste anything. You know, he's a very productive God. Tell the Lord, Father, please, the ones you shared with me, the one you gave me, I've not done anything about it. Please forgive me in the name of Jesus. Lord, please forgive me. Forgive me. There is nobody in this place that God has not given idea. Maybe you saw it in the dream or anyhow, you have, you have gotten certain ideas. But you didn't do anything about it. You are considering money. And because you are considering money, if you consider the cloud, you will not sow. Instead of you to take the first step of faith, you didn't do anything. You are just contemplating and contemplating and the thing is just there. Tell him, Father, Lord, I'm so sorry. From this moment, Lord, I want you to help me in the name of Jesus. Give me the courage. Give me the grace in the name of Jesus to continue to run after this. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. A lady came to my office many years ago. She came for me to pray for her concerning a job. Say, man of God, please pray for me. And the Lord just said to me, say, you have something in your house now. You brought it from your country. I don't know what is it. That thing, that particular thing, go and do it. Unknown to me that this lady is a, 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 a hairdresser. Do you know that just that idea was what sustained that lady in this country? Because so many people came to this country... You just feel that, oh, I need a job. I need a job. You are thinking that the, the ones you can do for yourself may not attain anything. No. You are making a mistake. In fact, it is even possible for God to tell you, go back to your country. Yeah, thank God for UAE. But UAE is not the ultimate. There are some of you, if I tell you something, to do certain things, I give you I stand before the almighty God. One year, one year, you will thank God that God, really. I don't see myself as a consultant, but I see myself as a spiritual counselor. Just sitting with you, give, now go back to your country, go and be doing that, this particular thing. In one year, you will have result. But a lot of people want to say in UAE, Dubai, there is light. But come to think about it, what are you looking for in Dubai? Can somebody tell me? Be sincere. Money. Huh? I thought you said, I came to know God. <laughs> Money. Do you know that somebody, some people travel from their country? What they could have been doing in their country? There is one of my son. I called him, I said, there is this particular business. Go and do it. He says, Daddy, that is what I was doing in Nigeria before I came. And I was doing very well. I said, go back. Because that is where your blessing is. You are looking for a salary job. No wonder some of us have been frustrated. I'm telling you idea rules the world the idea the lord gave to jacob was what he used to what to bankrupt the whole of the business empire of labor just a d divine idea the angel of god revealed it to him and he did exactly that and he started cashing out i'm telling you many people are in uae they are not supposed to be here Apart from the spiritual aspect that God, is, God has brought you here to connect and to collect, there are some people you are better off in your country, in fact, on the farm. Let me give you an idea. As you are here now, everybody, before the end of today, you must eat. Otherwise, you'll be looking as if why are people running away from the farms? Yeah, that is where the wealth is. That is where the blessing is. 
Somebody say idea. idea. As I'm talking, you may not accept it because all you are looking for is white collar job. I don't know. I told the woman, I say, go back to your country and begin to do this particular thing. You will call me in three years to thank me. In my book, Securing Your Future, I wrote, just one thing is enough. One, just one thing. You don't need two. One. In farming, let me give you an example now. In farming, there are so many things you can do. Do you know that some people, the only thing they farm is maize? And that is what is giving them money. Some is just cow or fishery or pigry. They don't have two, just one. I am aware that the devil is wicked. When a man is set to achieve greatness, the devil will just come and blow away that thing from his heart. He will now begin to direct him to irrelevant thing. See, it's Mary Gurande. He thinks he's making progress. He's just running, no movement. He's just going round, round, round. You see, that is how it is with so many people in life. But I pray for you from today. May you break free from every evil circle. In the name of Jesus. I want you to close your eyes. You're going to tell the Lord, Father, that which you have given unto me, that has remained idle in me, let it come alive from today. What you have given unto me, that is idling away in me. Now, open your mouth and pray this prayer, brethren. This is not a prayer for you to pray with no mouth closed. Tell the Lord, Father, whatever it is that you have given unto me that is just idling away by your power in the name Jesus, let it begin to find expression. I revisit it tonight, this morning in the name of Jesus. Unique ideas, unique ideas. In the name of the Lord Jesus, unique ideas. But Kalon to Sabilaha Kashanda. Unique ideas. Ideas that will shift me away from where I am. Ideas, Lord God, that will give me my own place in destiny. Ideas, oh God, Father, Lord God, that will terminate shame and reproach in my life in the name of Jesus. I receive it from now by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to war against the spirit of manipulation. That is the weapon the devil uses to frustrate people. That man was doing a profitable business in his country. He sold it to travel. For what is not certain. I call that the peak of manipulation. What is in UAE? What is, it? What is, what is in UAE? Electricity. Flashy, flashy, flashy everything. But do you know that in America today, most millionaires and billionaires are farmers? There are some of you now, you have acres of land in your country and you came to UAE. One plot of land is enough to make you. That's why I said to you, what you have is enough. Just an idea. What can I do on this land? But you just, you are there. Just say, I have land in my country. I have land. That land is enough to make you. I'm not telling you now to go and build a house on it now. To use that land maximally. Am I speaking to you? I know this message will keep, will get you thinking. You have a land. That land, you can engage it. I know in this country, a lot of things are, you know, tailored, you know, designed. But in our countries, you have the freedom to do so many things. So think about it. What are you looking for here? You will never be frustrated. Amen. I pray against the spirit of frustration. Amen. In the name of Jesus you open your mouth now and begin to challenge every manipulative spirit. The spirit that manipulates people away from their joy. 
the spirit that manipulates people away from their breakthrough. It's just about the time the person to break through. That devil will just move the person away. And the person is doing irrelevant things. And he does irrelevant things for years, for years. And at the end, he's coming to come and do that particular thing. Tell the Lord in the name of Jesus, every spirit of manipulation, I come against the spirit of manipulation. I come against the spirit of manipulation. Every spirit of manipulation, every spirit of deceit, every spirit of deceit that is sitting on my head, sitting on my mind, manipulating me away from where my joy is, where my pr promotion is. In Jesus' name we pray. Every great thing in life starts via idea. Somebody left Somebody left United States of America, I mean, well, yes, United States of America after many years. You know what? The person went to Rwanda. <laughs> Another person left Canada for how many years? He has been there for 20 years. He said, I went back to my country. And in five years, what he has been wanting to gather for five years, he, I mean, for 20 years, he gathered it within five years. So the truth of the matter, let's talk to ourselves, you see, because this is the way God blesses people, especially if you are willing and you are obedient. You are willing and you are obedient. As I'm talking to you now, the Lord may be telling you, see, so why, why, why are we stressing ourselves? Some of us are on overstay. Some of us cannot renew our visa. Do you understand? But in your country, there's nothing like visa renewal. It's just for you to know what to do. What can I do? What can I do? That man left America after 25 years. He went, he went back to Rwanda. He started something. Oh, you may be saying, no, oh, Pastor, he has gone with many money. No. Bills was almost killing him in America. For those people who have traveled to England, let them, let them tell you what they, are pay, what, they are, what they are experiencing. You will pay bill until you, are, you, almost, you almost want to pay with your blood. Things will change for us. Amen. Things will change in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is not by force. You should be willing. If you are willing and obedient, then the Holy Spirit will open, up to you, will open you up to ideas. Ideas. And as soon as you receive it, just keep it to yourself. See how you want to implement it. I'm telling you, if it is from the Holy Spirit, it will never fail. Within the space, maximum three years, the ark of God was in the house of Obedidon for how many months? Huh? Three, months? three months. And everything about our life changed. Now, the Lord, the Lord instructed me just early this morning as I stood before him and he said, pass the message across to all the pastors. There shall be blood of sprinkling today. To destroy every agenda of accident. The devil may want to trap some people. That is the privilege we have here. We, he will never leave us in any ignorance, in any darkness. And as soon as the, de the Lord revealed that, the devil started grinding and started, you know, foaming. Because he knows that the secret has been revealed again. So this morning, it is water, but it's going to be converted to the blood of Jesus. And it's going to be administered at, as blood of sprinkling to everyone in this house. Yeah. This is what is done in all our centers this morning. The blood of sprinkling. Our families are kept by the power of God. Yeah. No one will be trapped in any, in any sudden accident. Yeah. Be it domestic accident or outside accident. Whatever the agenda of the devil. Please open your mouth and begin to declare now. We frustrate you are the all singer, you know everything, but every strategies of the devil to want to trap us and our families in any form of accident, we destroy it now in the name of Jesus. We destroy it. It shall not be. We cancel every 
accident concerning us, concerning our children, our families back home. No mishap, no mishap. By the word of God in the name of Jesus, we are kept by the mercy of God. We are kept by the mercy of God. Our children are kept by the mercy of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. About 10 years ago, we were at the, was it, I can't remember, was it uh, lunch hour, felt, no, I don't think it was lunch hour, maybe a Friday service. I finished leading the people during the session of prayer. As I was about to go to sit down, the Lord said to me, call them back. Let them pray against accident. Do you know that that same day, our brother Mike Abuno was involved in a multiple accident, but the Lord saved him. Amen. Just by the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. So the prayer we prayed now will speak by the power of God. Amen. None of us shall be involved in it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, because you commanded it and we are carrying it out, GKC as a family is kept away from mishap. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, that accident the devil has concluded, we escape it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So wherever you are, just stay where you are. Father, thank you. This is no longer ordinary. I was ministering to, you know, I was speaking to somebody. Somebody said, ah, I was here on T Wednesday, I mean on Friday night. He said, what surprised me was that that lady drank ordinary water and she started vomiting. You know why? Whatsoever will lift up to God and will say is exactly what it is in the spirit realm. You can see this, but it's no longer ordinary water. This is the blood. And for every one of us here, as it touches you, you escape evil. Amen. Your children escapes evil. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. whatever the devil has concluded, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please say that amen. amen. In this ministry, by his mercy, we rob the devil. The devil must have concluded evil agenda concerning people. And ultimately, it is usually premature death. Just to trap them and, and destroy them. But as Jesus Christ comes through for us, he will just stop it. He says to me, I will never allow anything to be kept away, secret, for you in this house. Nothing. There is nothing that catches me unaware. He said, somehow, one way or the other, I will let you know. And so, everyone in this minute, this morning, just open your heart as we administer this. It is for your own safety. It is for your own security. And I hope everyone here, you are open-hearted. If your heart is closed, I'm sorry, you may not be a partaker. As this touches your people, Father, you will do exactly what you say you're going to do. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. This is the blood of sprinkling as you commanded, as you instructed. Upon everyone in this house, no calamity. Amen. Only life, please. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Only testimony. Amen. By the word of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be in the spirit. Connect with me in the spirit. Jesus, the son of the living God.
mighty name we pray. Amen. Please shout that amen again. Amen. It is done. Amen. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of ram. Lord, I'm asking also in all our centers, let the canopy of the blood of Jesus avail for everyone. Amen. Lord, we are kept and we are secure by your mercy. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are in church this morning. You came with your covenant commitment or your tithe. Please kindly come to the front. You are a tight, you are a covenant partner, kindly step to the front.